What's up everybody? Today I've got a tech tip for getting more power and flexibility out of your high-end Canon camera's autofocus system. For a quick bit of background, when I first got serious in photography, I was mostly doing bird photography. And one of the biggest things that I took away from that was that I needed to be able to quickly adapt to changing situations when it came to controlling my camera. And that's the line of thinking that drives this setup. So we're going to look at the ability to configure a camera with two rear auto focusing buttons that do two different things. And to be honest, this is one of the features of Canon's higher end DSLRs that I haven't seen in any other brand's cameras. In fact, it's something that's become so central to my way of shooting that its omission from the EOS R has been a major reason why I haven't picked one up and even when they've been available at steep discounts. So I'm going to walk through this setup on the camera I use, which is the 5D Mark IV. Uh, however, the same setup can be used with the 1DX, 1DX Mark II, 5D Mark III, 5DS and 5DSR, and D, uh, 7D Mark II. Presumably this also applies to the 1DX Mark III. However, at the time of recording, it was just announced and I haven't been able to verify that it, uh, it does this. So let's dive in. As I said, this setup revolves around using rear button focusing, so let's start there. If you're not familiar with the technique, then briefly, rear button focusing decouples the autofocus system's activation from the shutter release and puts it on its own button on the back of the camera. Ultimately, this gives you a tremendous amount of control over when the AF system is activated, so you don't, for example, have a carefully focused shot screwed up by the camera trying to refocus the image when you go to take the picture. On the 5D Mark IV, the configuration for this is done in the Custom Controls menu, which is found on the Custom Functions 3 menu page. So in the Custom Controls menu, there are two different buttons we need to look at. First, we need to be able to disable the autofocus when the shutter button is half pressed. The shutter button entry will be selected by default, so we can just press the set button to enter its settings page. By default, this will be set to metering and autofocus start. start. When we want, what we want to do is switch this to just metering start, so the shutter release won't activate the autofocus system. The second thing we need to check is that the AF on button is set to activate the autofocus system. This should be the default mode, but it's a good idea to double check anyway. So, on the, so you should see metering and autofocus start under the button's name at the top of the screen. If it isn't displayed there, enter the button setting page and change it there the same way you did for the shutter release. That gets the camera configured for basic rear button focusing. Now it's time for the fancy stuff that makes this really powerful. The first of these features is using registered autofocus points. On these cameras, a second autofocus point and mode can be saved and re for quick recall. There are a number of ways that this can be done, but the way I do it is to use a second AF on button. Changing and registering autofocus points is done while in the autofocus point selection mode. This is the mode that you, let you end up in when you push the autofocus point selection button on the back of the camera. To register an autofocus point, enter the autofocus point selection mode, then use the joystick control dials, the autofocus area button, you know, whatever, to select the point and area mode that you want to register. One thing to note, you can, only re you can register a point or mode in any of the modes except zone AF and large zone AF. Finally, to register the settings that you've got, hold the autofocus point selection button and press the backlight button. To clear a registered autofocus point, well, it, again, while in the auto point selection mode, hold the autofocus point selection button and press the ISO flash exposure compensation button. So with registered points covered, there are a couple of additional settings I change to get the most out of my camera. To start with, I use orientation linked autofocus points. Using orientation linked autofocus points is certainly optional and definitely not necessary for this to work, but I find it very useful in the shooting I do in general. When orientation linked autofocus points are enabled, the camera will save the current manual and registered autofocus points for each of the ca uh, three camera orientations. These are landscape, 
portrait with the grip up and portrait with the grip down. To configure orientation linked autofocus points and modes, head over to the autofocus 4 menu. The third item from the bottom is orientation is the orientation linked autofocus point menu entry. In that auto focus or in the orientation linked autofocus point menu, you'll be presented with three options. These are same for both vertical and horizontal, separate autofocus points area plus point, and separate autofocus points point only. So the first option turns off orientation linked autofocus points, and the camera will just use the same autofocus point and area mode regardless of how you hold it. The second option allows you to save different points and area modes for each of the camera orientations. For example, you could use, say, the auto selection area mode in landscape, but a single point in portrait. Finally, the last save setting will only save the autofocus point. The area mode will be the same in all orientations. So if you set, for example, the full 8-point expanded area uh, point mode, that will be used in landscape and portrait, even though the point could be different, that mode will be the same. I use the second option, area plus point, as it gives me the most flexibility. Additionally, while we're in the AF4 menu, there's one other option that I adjust, and this one's a mouthful. This is the initial autofocus point, auto selection, AI servo autofocus option. Put simply, it's the entry right below orientation linked autofocus points. So since 2012, Canon's AI servo autofocus mode uses focus information, distance, color, and infrared information to determine what to track and what to keep tracking when using the auto selection area mode. However, when the autofocus system starts, it needs to know where it should start that process, what point it should look at, and this setting controls how it does that. In this menu, there are three, three options. So to be perfectly honest, what these options do exactly is something I'm not entirely clear on from reading through Canon's technical literature and manuals. I just know which mode seems to work best for me. What I found from experience is that the second option here seems to be the best option for the way I set up my cameras. In this mode, what the literature seems to indicate is that when the autofocus uh, selection AF area mode or the auto selection AF area mode is used through a registered autofocus point, the camera will use the current manually selected autofocus point as the initial place to start tracking. Set this way, the camera, again, will, I think, will look at whatever autofocus point I'm currently using normally for the initial conditions. So in theory, this should allow me to quickly sit, switch from a static shot to a full area tracking of the same subject without having to hope that the camera will guess the right, guess right at which initial, uh, what the initial conditions are. This brings me to the final step that makes this all shine adding a second button for focusing use or second rear button for focusing using the registered AF, uh, that uses the registered AF point to configure a second AF on control we need to go back to the custom controls menu only this time i'm going to modify the behavior of the auto exposure lock button so similar to what I did with the AF on button, I've changed the auto exposure lock button to metering an AF start from the default of auto exposure lock. However, unlike the AF on button, by pressing the info button while in this screen, I can further customize the behavior of, the, uh, of, of how this button operates. I should note, you could do this, you can do the same thing with the AF on button, however, I leave mine in the default configuration. So in the detail screen, settings screen, we're presented with a number of options. The first menu entry here controls the autofocus start position. And here you have a choice between using the manually selected AF point or the registered AF point. Setting this to, uh, I set this to uh, registered autofocus point so that pressing this button activates the AF system using that registered AF point instead of the normally active one. 
With that set, we can move on to the second option, which is AI Servo AF Characteristics Options. So here you can pick one of the six AI Servo Characteristic Modes, or leave it set to use the current camera settings. I keep this set to the current settings. This way the camera uses the same AI servo mode that the, I normally have the camera set to in the AF1 menu. However, changing this may be useful in some situations. For example, if you're a sports photographer, you might want to have your main AF on button set to ignore obstacles, while the second one is tuned for subjects that accelerate and decelerate quickly. In this case, this is where you'd make that kind of change. The third entry is the autofocus oper option selection. Or the, I'm sorry, the autofocus operation selection. The choices here are to maintain current settings, use one shot, or use AI servo. On my cameras, I set this to use AI servo to ensure that my secondary autofocus fo button will always be able to track a moving subject regardless of how I might otherwise have the camera configured. The final option is AF area selection mode. This allows you to specify the autofocus area mode that this button will always use. For example, you could set it to single point or auto point selection. I leave this set to maintain current settings since Control of the autofocus area selection mode is done through the registered autofocus point. I find that doing it this way makes it faster and easier to change the autofocus area mode instead of digging through these menus to change it when I need to. With all the options covered, let me briefly demonstrate how this configuration plays out. So typically, I'll save the auto selection AF mode to my registered autofocus point and use either a single point or spot autofocus as my primary. Now, when I press the AF on button, the camera will focus using the manually selected autofocus point. However, if I push the secondary AF on button, as you can see, the camera switches to AI servo and uses the whole autofocus area for focusing. In practice, this gets used, used something like this. So if I'm photographing a bird perched on the tree, I can use the precision of the single AF point to ensure that I'm focusing where I want to be. And I can do this in one shot AF so that the camera absolutely ensures that the, the subject is in focus and isn't constantly adjusting the focus. However, if that bird takes off, I can immediately change to using the full pattern for tracking AF and AI servo tracking focus just by moving my thumb from one button to the other. I hope this video has shed a ray of light on the power that's available in Canon's Pro Level AF systems. If you found this bit of video helpful, please smash the thumbs up button and subscribe. If not, well, you know what to do. For more in-depth written content on photography, travel destinations, and deep dives into can camera tech, please visit my website at pointsandfocus.com. Thanks for watching.